You know, there's an old saying by a late economist, uh, I think his name was Benjamin Graham, he said, in the short run, a stock price is a voting machine, in the long run, it's a weighing machine. It goes up, it goes down. If you hold the stock long enough, the great companies will go up. But right now, it's a mood, and right now, the mood is soured. So I think that's the way it is right now. I think the highest growth companies are also sometimes the more speculative ones, and people don't want to take a lot of risk right now. And so I think that's what's happening in the market. But ultimately, as a CEO, I try to focus on things I can control. I certainly can't control the stock market. I can control the, I can control the performance of the company, and that's what we're focused on. Right, but when, for example, um, Uber's CEO, you may have seen the letter yeah, that he wrote to the staff, basically saying that, uh, you know, the, the times are going to get tough. We've got to make money. There's got to be a return on capital. Right. And I'm old enough to remember the old days of pro path to profitability of the 1990s. Um, do you have to think the same things? There has to be a better business case. We already went through all that. In 2020, we lost 80% of our business in eight weeks. We had to make painful decisions. We did a layoff. We restructured our company. We rebuilt the company from the ground up. Then we took it public. In Q1, we did $1.2 billion of free cash flow. In Q1 is our low season. Most people aren't traveling between January and March. So though I can't speculate on what Q2, Q3 will be, you can look at our last year's financials to get a sense of what's going to happen. So we are lean. We have 6,000 employees. We were very, very profitable from a free cash flow standpoint in Q1. We're feeling really good. And we are not pulling on the, on the brakes. We're stepping on the gas. Russia and Ukraine and Belarus. Uh, I follow closely what you've been doing there. Um, and, of course, there's a lot of misunderstandings over what your policies are and where you are. Chance to clarify. Well, we pulled out of Russia. We pulled out of Belarus. And that means we're in almost every country in the world, but North Korea, Iran, South Sudan, Russia, Belarus, maybe one or two others. You will stay out of those countries. And the reason I ask that is because there's a sort of a, a percolating view for many businesses that you'll go back as quick as you can, so to speak. Well, you know? we're not going to make a business decision here. We'll make a principal decision. If it seems like the right thing to go back, we'll go back. So long as there's a war, there's an invasion that won't end, we're not going to go back. All right, let's go and have a look at this palatial residence. Okay. Oh, yeah, we're going to go upstairs. Who is this? Yeah. What are you doing? Are you eating this? Who is this? This is, her, this is Sophie Supernova. The reason her last name's Supernova is because she has more energy than a collapsing star. She's a nine-month-old golden retriever. Wow. And she travels everywhere with me. And well, we only book Airbnbs that allow dogs, and she comes with me, and she's a good time. What makes a good Airbnb, in your view? I think the simplest way to describe it is a home that feels like home. So it feels like home meaning it's comfortable enough you could live there, not just for a night, but indefinitely. What makes a home? <clears throat> Personal items, lots of different furniture, you know, like, like a host that like, like kind of put things out with care. So places to, to relax, like, you know, you, you go to a hotel room, there's really not really a lot of places to sit. You can sit in the bed, you can sit in a little chair. In a home, like, there's like kind of unlimited places to relax. Do you, do you think they are, are you still fighting the battle do you, uh, for, against regulators in different cities? Or has that been and gone? Or you won some, you lost others? I think we're kind of in a new chapter where we're actually much more partnering with cities than battling cities. We've collected $4 billion in hotel tax already. We have agreements with the vast majority of big cities we operate in. So we're mostly in a partnership right now. And actually, when the pandemic happened, a lot of co countries and cities and states reached out to us because they had big sh tourism shortfalls. So it used to be cities reached out to us and it wasn't a good thing. Now they reach out to us and it's, you know, better circumstances, at least for us.